Hi everyone, today we will talk about the datetime module. And I'm sure many of you have already noticed, but Python doesn't really have a built-in data type for dates. That's why today's tutorial is very important, especially if you're into data science. So I basically went through the entire datetime documentation and I've pulled out the most important commands which we absolutely need to know. So without any further ado, let's start coding. We will begin with the imports focusing on dates first. That's why we will type from date time import date. And then right below, we will print the current date with date dot today, and then an empty set of round brackets. Then we can go ahead and assign this expression to today. And of course, let's print it right below. We will save this file and we will run it. And awesome, so today is February the 26th, 2022. Now what we have just created here is called a date object, which means that it has its own special attributes and special methods. And if you guys are not sure what attributes and methods are, please check out my classes and objects tutorial first. I'm including it in the description. Now let's go ahead and print some of the most important attributes of this date class. So we will begin with the day first, which is given to us by today.day. Yeah, it's that simple. Right below, we will print the month with today.month. And then lastly, we will print the year with today.year. Of course, let's save it and let's rerun it. Awesome, so you can see we have printed all our attributes and you can also see that they return integers. But we don't always want our dates to be represented by integers. What if we'd like to print February instead of the second month? Or what if we'd like to mention that today is a Saturday? For this, we will use some special string formatting, which we can find at the very bottom of the datetime documentation, specifically under the strf time and the strp time methods. Now to apply this on our code, we will simply type today.strf time to which we will pass a string with a bunch of format codes. Now we can find these codes at the table right beside me, and the link is of course in the description. Now the first thing we'd like to mention is the day of the week. So in our case, we would like the full name, so we will do this with a percentage symbol and a capital A. Let's go ahead and apply it on our code, so percentage symbol and capital A. Next, we would like the numeric day of the month which is given to us by a percentage symbol and a lowercase d. Then we would like the full name of the month, which is given by a percentage symbol and a capital B. And then lastly, we would like to specify the year with capital Y. Now you can find all of these at the table below. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and print this expression and have a look. Cool. And we can see that we have printed Saturday 26, February 2022. Now, the best part about strings is that we can add all kinds of characters in between. So for example, we can add a comma right after a, we can add th and of right after d, we can save it, rerun it, and we have a much more grammatically correct string. And since all these format codes are case sensitive, if we only make a tiny change, it really affects our string. So for example, if we'd like to switch to a lowercase a, to a lowercase b and a lowercase y. It will save this file, rerun it, and we are getting a completely different string in return. We're getting abbreviations instead of the full names. Cool. Now let's try to replace some attributes. We can do this with today.replace, to which we will pass year equals today.year plus one. Mm -hmm. And we will then add a bunch of spaces, of course, because it's going to drive me crazy if I don't. And we will assign this expression to next underscore year. Awesome. Let's print it right below just to make sure everything worked. And awesome. We are getting February the 26th, 2023. And this is how we replace attributes. But can we use these attributes to make calculations? So for example, let's say I'd like to have a countdown to a specific date. We can do this with ABS, which I believe stands for absolute, and then next year minus today with spaces. Let's assign this expression to difference. And right below, we will create an extra fancy print statement for it. So we will type print 
we will open a set of quotes to which we will pass only and then a set of curly brackets. Now this set of curly brackets represents a placeholder. So right after it, we will just continue our sentence with days until next year. Let's go ahead and add a dot format method to the end of the string to which we will pass difference dot days. Now, please do not get confused with the above attribute of day. This is a completely different object, okay? So here we specify days instead. Now let's go ahead and save this file and have a look. Hmm. Awesome, so only 356 days until next year. Okay, but what if we're not interested in today's date? What if we'd like to load Nikola Tesla's birthday? We can do this with date, to which we will pass four digits for the year as a first argument, so 1856. Then we will pass the month, which is seven, as in July. And then we will pass the day, which is the 10th. Now let's go ahead and assign it to Nikola Tesla and we can then print it right below. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so we see that we now have generated a date, which is not today. Perfect. Now, if we're not interested in passing a bunch of arguments to our date object, if we would like to pass them as a string instead, we can use the from ISO format method. So right below, we will type date, then from ISO format, to which we will pass a string with four digits for the year, followed by a dash, and then two digits for the month, followed by a dash once again, and lastly, two digits for the day. Now let's go ahead and assign it back to Nikola Tesla, because essentially we're generating the exact, the exact same object. Let's save it. And if nothing changes in our print statement, we got it. Perfect, nothing changed. We are getting the exact same date. Awesome. Now, if we are curious which day of the week it was back then, we can simply print it with the weekday method. So right below, we will print Nikola Tesla dot weekday and a set of round brackets. Let's save this file, let's rerun it. Huh, and we're getting a three. Now, what's going on here is that Monday is represented by zero and Sunday is represented by six, which means that Nikola Tesla was born on a Thursday. Awesome. Now this pretty much sums up all the important commands we will use on a date object. And now we can finally move on with a date and time object. For this, we will first import the date time class, and then we will scroll below to the very bottom of our code where we can load the current date and time with date time dot now and an empty set of round brackets. Then we will assign it to now and let's print it right below. And beautiful, we are now dealing with a date and time object, which has all the attributes of a date object along with some additional attributes of time, which means that now we can print the following expression. It's the placeholders minute of the placeholder, I believe it's end hour of the placeholders day of the placeholder end month. I believe my head is blocking some of it. Not anymore. We will then add a dot format method to which we will pass now dot minute followed by now dot hour, then now dot month. And lastly, actually, that was the last one. And before it, we need to specify now dot day. Cool. Hopefully it all works out. So let's give it a quick print. Awesome, so it's the 42nd, uh -huh. sorry guys, it's the 40, <laughs> oh my god, it's the 43rd <laughs> minute of the second hour of the 26th day of the second month. Perfect. However, in addition, we also have some extra attributes for seconds, for microseconds, as well as time zones. So let's see another example which combines all of them. And I warn you in advance, this is not gonna be a happy date. It's just very easy to remember and it's the only reason why I use it. So let's go ahead and load the date and time of the nuclear disaster in Chernobyl. Yeah, we will do this with date time dot from ISO format to which we will pass a string with four digits for the year, which is 1986, then two digits for the month, which is April, and then two digits for the day, which is the 26th. 
We will then add a space and we can then specify the hour. And brace yourself, this one is going to be quite mystical. So we will need 01 for the hours, followed by a colon. Then we will need 23 for the minutes, followed by a colon, and 40 for the seconds. Ooh. And then we will also specify the microseconds. And for this, we will need at least three digits. Now, I'm not sure exactly the microseconds that the nuclear disaster occurred on, but we will just specify 000 instead. Next, we will also add some time zone information, which we can add with a plus 0400, which stands for Moscow Daylight Time or UTC plus 4. Therefore, the plus 4. Yeah, now let's go ahead and assign it to Chernobyl and let's print it right below. So we will type print, let's give it a run. And even though it's already quite informative, we can actually make it even more informative than that. And as you may guess, we will once again use some format codes. So we will print Chernobyl.strf time, to which we will pass a string of the Chernobyl disaster occurred on. And then we will specify our very first format code, which would be the weekday. Now we already know it's a capital A. Then we will specify the month with a capital B, followed by the day with a lowercase d. And then we can actually add a th and we can move on with a year, capital Y. Next, we will need the time. Now, in terms of time, we can either specify separate format codes for the hours, for the minutes, and for the seconds, or we can combine them into a single format code of a percentage symbol and a capital X. Next, we will also specify the time zone, which would be MSD. And in a set of round brackets, we will include the UTC equivalent with a percentage symbol and a capital Z. And yeah, everything looks about right. Let's double check. Yep. So let's save everything and let's run it. And there you go. This is way more informative than before. And by the way, we can also specify the time zone with an attribute. So right below, let's print MSD is actually Chernobyl.tz, as in time zone, info. Let's save it. Let's run it. And there you go. Now we are targeting the time zone with an attribute. Cool. Now let's move on with the time object. For this, we will first import the time class, and then we will scroll to the very bottom of our code, where we will create our time object with time, and in a set of round brackets, we will specify the hour first, so 15, then we will specify the minutes, 33, and lastly, we will specify the seconds, 8. And these are just random numbers, it doesn't really matter, it's just an example, and we will assign it to my time. Now let's go ahead and print it right below. And awesome, now we are dealing with a time object. Now, alternatively, we can also load time as a string. So as you guys may guess, that would be time from ISO format, to which we will pass a string of 15 colon 33 colon 08. Now, in addition, I would like to add some time zone information. And in my case, that would be minus 0700 UTC. Now let's go ahead and assign it to my time once again. We'll just override it and let's give it a quick print. Awesome, so now we have added our time zone as well. But what if we'd like to convert this 24 hour time into a 12 hour time with an AM PM indication? We can simply do it right below. So we will print my time dot strf time to which we will pass a percentage symbol in a capital I indicating the hour. Then we will pass a colon, a percentage symbol, and a capital M, indicating the minutes, of course. And then to indicate whether if it's AM or PM, we will pass a percentage symbol and a lowercase p. Mm -hmm. Then let's go ahead and save this, and let's give it a run. Awesome! So now we are dealing with 3 PM. Amazing. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is how to combine a date object with a time object in order to create a date time object. So right below, let's load a date. Now, in my case, I'm going to load my birthday, my upcoming birthday. So let's type date 2022 for the year, then five for the month, May and 22 for the day. Let's assign it to my date. And right below, we can then type date time, 
dot combine and then we will pass my date followed by my time let's assign it to my birthday and let's print it below sorry guys <laughs> now let's print it below okay so we have successfully combined a date object with a time object to create a daytime object now thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a like if you have anything to say please leave me a comment if you'd like to be extra awesome please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell or if you'd like to be extra super duper quadruple awesome please share this video with the world and then i'll be very happy so thank you guys so much once again i'll see you soon